Bill Duro, who is an American historian, he's written the history of civilization, and he is a solid economist. He says societies don't collapse because of external factors, but they collapse inside. When things go bad inside, and one of the things that usually occurs, rich people and the elite, what we call the elite. I don't have a particular sympathy for them either, but at the same time, we have to look under what kind of pressure they are by the government. So they react and they pay off government agencies to get favorable terms. And I can assure you, throughout history, the rich people have never paid the fair amount of tax. I mean, Buffett, he's talked about this, that he has a lower tax rate than his secretary. <laughs> That's the way it is. The rich, they have ways to influence laws. But at the same time, there's a turning point in the wealth inequality equation. When the number of poor people, their size in terms of masses, the mob, their large number exceeds the number of rich people who are powerful. And then it comes to an explosion. Usually in history, it's called a revolution, like the French Revolution. And sometimes they're quiet revolutions, like in England in the 19th century, when the labor unions gained a lot of power. And so you have a transition from a very unequal society into a more equal society. But it's the less successful society. We have to see this very clearly and not as advantageous for the wealthy people than it was before. So my view would be it will end badly. There's no good outcome. And usually, as you know, in the US, you have now elections coming up in November. The sad part is that none of the candidates is actually interested in giving people a choice. None of the candidates is interested to do something about the gigantic government debt, the huge fiscal deficits, the prices of home insurance have gone up. But the joke is that the Bureau of Labor Statistics calculates that health care costs have gone down in the <laughs> last four or five years. What a joke. And yet the Bureau of Labor Statistics, consisting of politicians, of course, the politicians ask them to understate inflation. The people can't be told the truth. There would be a revolution. So you live in the illusion that everything is hunky-dory and the standards of living go down gradually for the majority of people. But the people that are on TV, on CNBC, CNN and everywhere, they're the people that have the money, the financial people. They like the money printing because the financial sector loves when net asset value of assets go up because the fees go up. On top of everything, we have the immigration issue. I mean, people, again, are brainwashed by the government who claims that it is good for the country and so forth. Well, to some extent, I'm all in favor of immigration. And there are a lot of literature on the subject. I mean, America is a product of migration from Western Europe initially and other countries later. And that has been very beneficial for America, as it has also been for Australia and New Zealand and so forth. But nowadays, we import a lot of people that are not going to be part of our society. And for to achieve integration takes time. So you can't have a huge wave of people coming in. That was one of the problems Rome encountered at some point during the empire. It had some advantages that new people came in, but it also had dangers and these dangers then overwhelmed the system. But I'd say this, it will end badly for the simple reason. A politician that goes to the voters and says, look, all of you and me, we must tighten our belts. We must pay higher taxes. Do you think he will be elected? No way. The other politician could say, oh, we have to tighten our belt. We have to cut the pensions of all the police veterans, army veterans, the Navy veterans. And then, then you think he's going to be elected? The pensioners, we have to cut the pensions. <laughs> I imagine that not going to happen. So they will continue to print money. They have to print money. The system collapses the moment they don't print money. Central banks played a major role in financing the deficits. Because if you look at American growth, 1800 to 1900, the population goes from roughly 4 million to 80 million. We have 
the whole construction of canals and railroads. The railroadization of America is one of the economic miracles. It wasn't profitable for the railroads, <laughs> most of it bankrupt, but it led to America being able to produce goods in multiple locations around the country. Same for the canals. Other countries, if you go to Indonesia, the manufacturing is concentrated in three different regions. That's it. Only one region has the manufacturing. These are these clusters of wells, of clusters of industrial production, as described by the economist Michael Porter. Anyway, in my view, this asset inflation that we've had in the last 40 years coming because of money printing and the fiscal deficits has created a huge asset bubble, an inflated asset bubble. Valuations of art, real estate, stocks and so forth at very high levels. In my view, this will be deflated. You asked me before, what should an individual do about it? Well, my view is very simple. You look at a period of inflation, 1950 to say 2010. Everything goes up and some people become immensely rich and some people less. So people that have assets that underperform the people that have assets that outperform they lag behind so i could say relatively speaking the wealth diminishes if we sit back now assets are up here in the sky they're inflated and everything will be one day deflated i'm not saying it will happen tomorrow but it's going to happen one day like during the depression who did well during the depression people who had assets that didn't go down in value at that time government bonds were good were a very good investment compared to say equities gold was a very good investment until the nice government of the u.s <laughs> decided to take it away from people they then revalued the price. In other words, you didn't get the appreciation. Whereby some people with connection, as always is the case, they could keep their gold. And not everybody lost the gold. <laughs> that is the nice thing about democracies. Uh, there are always exceptions. And one example, which is very relevant in the current context, because people don't realize, because they think our time, when stocks have gone up by 10% per annum or more, they think that this is normal. Mm -hmm. No, it's not normal because the economy is not growing at 10% per annum. So, you know, stocks have gone up much more than the economy. But one example of an inflated market that has now deflated and massively are commercial properties in the right. US. In front of their eyes, they have an example of a massive asset deflation. But when I talk about an asset deflation that that will occur, they all say it's crazy, but they have it in front of their eyes. And nobody, I assure you, nobody four years, five years ago would have predicted that commercial properties would drop by 50% and some 80%. Nobody. Now, the thing with real estate, in some countries, real estate is relatively low. And if you go to Europe, and also in the US, this is the case, there are cities where real estate is not that expensive. But in Europe, there are entire villages where you can get the house, yeah. but you have to undertake the renovation and so forth. But if you're a young guy and you have some strengths, because to build a house needs some physical strengths. And you have to be patient. It takes time because maybe you build a wall and you have to pull it down because it's badly built. It's not so simple. Not so easy. I do a lot of housework because I have a large office and I have a large property. But if you do it yourself, you go through trial periods where, you know, you make mistakes and then someone has to come and fix it. But anyway, it's interesting work. Now, in some cities in Europe, property prices are very low, extremely safe. You buy a property in Munich in Germany, it's expensive. Two hours away from Munich is dirt cheap in the countryside. Now with the internet, you see, you can live anywhere you want in America. Right. I wouldn't have been able to live in the north of Thailand 30 years ago. I would have had to be in either New York, Hong Kong, Singapore, London, Tokyo and so forth. But now I can live anywhere in the world.
I think the debt level has to be brought down massively. We have to go to a clinic and get clean. Someone who is a drug addict, he has to go through a period of really hellish time. Hellish. Also an alcoholic to get rid of it. A lot of people, they can get rid of it for three, four weeks and then they fall back into it. This is a very hard thing to do. And every government in history has chosen inflation over the hard medicine. Every. And the inflation is then even harder on people over time because it destroys entire sectors of societies at the expense of some people who become immensely rich. I mean, don't tell me that the normal state of an economy and of a society is that hedge fund managers become among the richest people in a society. This is an unusual period that can only exist when there is money printing. I mean, as smart as all these hedge fund managers are, still the wealth they create in such a short period of time is astronomical. I mean, for me, a society that has people like Carnegie, Mellon, JP Morgan is a sound society. They created something. The Rockefellers invented something. And of course, they were called robber barons, but they benefited society. People could buy cheap goods. They could ship goods cheaper from one place to another. They could travel cheaper from A to B. A money shuffler. Ray Dalio called a money shuffler, but then he toned down <laughs> because that, that applied to him as well. I'm not saying that the hedge managers don't deserve their wealth. Don't misunderstand me. I have nothing at all against them, and many of them are actually clients of mine. But I'm saying when people think that a society is healthy, when a group of people through shuffling assets, shuffling money, become so rich, this is not a normal society. Believe right. me, I think that the investment community is kind of philosophically to its asset prices that go up. You know, the Dow goes up every year. Yes, it's possible, but in real terms, maybe not. And there are periods of time when everything goes down. And I think we should be more focusing on how do I invest money when everything goes down? Because some things will not go down by 90%. Like the meme stocks, they went down 80-90%, but other things didn't go down 80-90%. And I feel that investors are not focused enough on the downside and focus too much, oh, everything will go up. Yes, so everything can go up in nominal terms, but say the dollar could collapse or inflation could be higher than the appreciation of assets. So lots of things happen, can happen. And I would uh, be very cautious about buying things on leverage and being overly greedy.